Give me another one. Go on home, Pepe. You're blind drunk. I said, give me another one! Come on, you're out of cash. Go sleep it off. <laughs> Thank you, Frank. Oh, it's a lovely evening. I think I'm going to sleep till Monday morning now. Oh. Well, uh, what do I do until Monday morning? After all, you're my only date for the weekend. <laughs> um, no, Frank, I didn't ask you up here to... Oh, Frank, come on, please. Please, don't spoil everything. Um, okay. <sighs> no, Frank, I don't want to. Okay. You're gonna go home right now. Well, Christina, why don't you face your problem? You're separated from your husband. You're a free woman. You've got to forget the past and make a new life for yourself. At five in the morning. 
a weird kind of life it would be if I started now, don't you think? And swimming in vodka. <laughs> Let's go. Hello? Margarita? Margarita, calm down. Calm down. What's wrong? Leo's helicopter crashed. No, he's still alive, but he's badly hurt. They've taken him to a hospital in Como. How is he? Where? All right. Have you called us, Waldo? Have you called us? No, no, he's not in New York. No, he's in the Bahamas for the weekend. I'll call him. Yes. Um, you leave for Como right away. Yes. We'll meet you there. All right? Margarita? Be strong. What's the matter? There's been an accident with your brother. Oh, my God. What are you telling me? Is he alive? Yes. But it's bad, huh? Where? Yes, in Italy. Christ, on the company plane just went in for an overhaul. Never mind. Wait for me. I can be in New York in about six hours. Yeah. And we can take the Concord on from there. Christina. Swear to me, Leo's not dead. Hey, fill me in. That the there is the brother. New York, the Bahamas. The playboy, huh? Yeah, and that's the oh, sister God. Margarita with her latest French husband. And how about that? The American next one. The whole goddamn family. Yeah? Only natural, I guess. Oh, yeah? Yeah, Freddy buys the farm. They're in line for quite a stash. Have you found out anything about the chief physician here yet? He seems to have an excellent reputation. This time, he's not treating some boy who's broken his leg falling off a bicycle. He's got the life of Leo Ferretti in his hands. Oswaldo, in my opinion, we must take Leo somewhere else. To the best hospital, with the best doctor. We must make a decision right away. It's... it's up to us. Did you consult Leo's personal physician? Yes, we did. We have to weigh things and give it careful thought. We don't have time for careful thought. We all know that Leo has always made the decisions in this family. This is one he can't make. If you all don't want to take the responsibility, I will. Well, I... Uh... It's not so easy. It is for me. We'll take him to the hospital in Geneva. I want to make sure my husband comes out of this. He's not your husband anymore. For me, he is. And he will be as long as I live.
Remember my children, Dr. Satani? Alberto, his wife, Julia, and this is Maurizio, the youngest. How the years pass. They're grown men. I'm sorry, but we have no time to lose. The helicopter's going to be ready in two hours. Yes, we're taking Uncle Leo to Geneva. I spoke to Dr. McCluskey just now. He's going to leave tonight, and he'll be able to make his examination first thing in the morning. Isn't Holmgreen better, the guy from Sweden? No, McCluskey's the best in the States. I have total trust in him. I'll go with Leo and Dr. Satani in the helicopter. Maybe you should stay here. There are going to be a lot of details to take care of. There's the press. Alberto, could you uh, deal with them? Sure. Thanks. So I guess all that's left is to uh, decide who's going to stand in for Leo at the office. It's incredible, the organizational skills that you possess. I don't know how we survived without you. Perhaps you don't realize the seriousness of the situation, Maurizio. If we don't hurry, Leo won't survive. That's right. So, well, I've never understood anything about the business, so I think Oswald is the one to take Leo's place. Me? Oh, no, no, I'd never know how to. I've been a broker too long looking after our New York company. I'd be more of a hindrance than a help. Well, in that case, I'd say Maurizio is the obvious choice. He's always been the closest to Leo and his work. True, true. We'll see. But the main thing now is to call a shareholders meeting. These are going to be a difficult few days. Remember, you can count on us. Thanks. Bonjour, mademoiselle. Oh, the morning. I hope that's coffee. Sure. Listen, I'm a little foggy. Can you tell me where I am? At the Villa du Comte d'Arty, mademoiselle, in Cap d'Antibes. How long have I been here? Since Wednesday night. You came from Monte Carlo with two friends. And today is? Saturday. Do you want your coffee strong? Please. Thanks. Better? There you are at last. Well, I only just read the papers this morning. I've been trying to find you everywhere. Where are you? On a boat with some friends. How's Uncle Leo? 
He's still in a coma. Christina took him to Geneva. Well, I'll catch a first flight home that I can. Thanks for the skirt. Oh, I don't need this. Hmm, who's Porsche? It's your friends from Monte Carlo. Well, you can tell my friend from Monte Carlo. He can find his car at the Nice airport. Uh, any message for the others when they wake up? Nah. Once I'm in charge, I'll make you head of my insurance company. All you have to do is walk the money to the bank. Gentlemen, what we all hope is that my brother Leo will return to his rightful position with all possible speed. But we must also face the fact that this could take some time. And since the Ferretti group can't operate without a president, Albeit we all hope he's only a temporary one. I have been forced to choose someone to replace him. There was considerable pressure from various quarters for me to take over, but I rejected this uh, suggestion from the start. As everybody here probably knows, I prefer my own less high-powered work in the States. After considerable reflection, I decided to ask Mr. Lomberto Radza to step in, since he's the most experienced of our senior executives. I am assuming everyone will be in agreement, so I propose that we vote by a show of hands. Right away. No, that's fine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Something wrong, Maurizio. I should have got that job. I had the right to it. You see now, what? You didn't want it. I know you were hoping for it. Quite natural, of course. Why did you pass me over? So you wouldn't be burnt out too young. So you'd have the time to gain more experience. So as to pave the way for a gradual handover of power. Bullshit! Bullshit! You know damn well that Uncle Leo made that choice. You'd have given it to me. Leo's the boss. He can afford to make mistakes. What makes you so sure that this would be a mistake? Your lack of moderation. Your lack of experience and your lack of self-control. You're the majority shareholder. You can change your mind whenever you want to. You could call a meeting tomorrow and put my name forward. No. Tomorrow morning, I'll be in the concourse. Dad. Dad, you're such a bastard. I wouldn't put it past you to start a fight. And that's a scene I'd rather avoid. How's my little sweetheart? <laughs> Give mommy a good night kiss. No, can't you see I have my makeup on? I'll give you a real one tonight, okay? Peggy? Come on, Veronica. Time to go now.
Hi. Hurry up and change. You're late. Are we going out tonight? Yes, it's the opening night of the opera. Oh, Juju, I'm sorry. I totally forgot. Of course you did. You only remember things that interest you. Like golf tournaments and bridge games. Look, honey, I'm sorry, but I had a hard day today. We took a vote on Uncle Leo's replacement. It's pretty tense. Who got it? Radza. Dad asked him to stand in as interim president. And what about you and Maurizio? Well, we stay where we are. Here with his insurance company and me with public relations. What did Maurizio say about that? He was mad as hell. Wouldn't even speak to him. Went off and sulked in Uncle Leo's office. Then he and Dad nearly had a fight. He was right, of course. It's disgusting the way the family treats you two. Nobody ever considers your existence. <sighs> Look, honey, if that's what Dad thought best, it's fine with me, okay? Everything's always fine with you, Alberto. You and your bloody English education. If you had any guts, like your brother, by now you'd have the position and the recognition that you're entitled to. You're the oldest, but you've just let him push you aside. Maurizio, Maurizio, Maurizio. He's the only damn thing you ever talk about. <sighs> let me ask you something, Julia. If you think he's so damn perfect, why the hell did you marry me? Because I got there too late. He was already married. The operation went well. We managed to remove the clot. How is he? He's back in intensive care and still in coma. Please tell me the truth, doctor. What are his chances for recovery? Even science is powerless to know that, Mrs. Ferretti. Everything depends on him now. He could come to in a a couple of hours or a year. There's no way of telling with this kind of brain trauma. But your husband is a healthy man, and he's a fighter. And in my opinion, he should come through. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. It took Uncle Leo's accident for me to get to see you. Yeah, well, I just don't like you to see me when I'm down. I've been going through some really hard times lately. Perhaps I'm partly to blame for your restless spirit. I spent so much of my life chasing around after your father. I suppose I neglected you. Strange how I feel so at peace here. I realize I've been wasting more and more of my life. Uncle Leo's accident woke me up. I'd really like to start to get my life back together again. My little cousin Beta. In the flesh. How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Christina called from Geneva. The operation went well. Your uncle is still in a coma, though. My dad leave? Yes, he went to the Bahamas, and I'm going to Monte Carlo. Oh, fine, I'm going to Milan. Mm. I'll cover you soon. 
Okay. What are you doing? Me? Um, race near the car. <laughs> Spend our summers here. Oh, I used to love it. Remember when you used to take me on your motorcycle? Mom wasn't home. I was so scared I couldn't breathe. You're more like a boy than a girl. You always said that. Drove me crazy. Because I was wild about you. You never even looked twice at me. How was I supposed to know how you turned out? Oh, yeah? And how was that? What Wonder <laughs> Woman, for God's sake. Look at this. Hello? Speaking. What kind of personal articles? I see. I, I'll be right there. There was a Como police. They found this guy who was trying to pawn off a gold watch. They think it's Uncle Leo's. Uh, there was this uh, roaring noise, blinding lights. I was scared shitless. Thought the thing was gonna fall on me. You were drunk. I'd had a few glasses. Why didn't you go for help? What was the point? They were dead. I reckon the stuff was no use to them anymore. So I grabbed the money, the watches, and the briefcase, and then I got the hell out of there. Oh, wait, wait, a briefcase? The police didn't say anything about a briefcase. That's because it's still at my place. Ah, there was nothing in it, just papers. I need those papers. You get me out of here, and I'll take you to them. Deal. No, I'll talk to my attorneys. That's a deal. Hey. And what do I get if I give the case to you? Two grand. Huh? That should keep you drunk for a year. <laughs> well, maybe a month. <laughs> Listen, one thing. If you tell anyone about that case, including my attorneys. You're gonna find yourself back here in no time. Is that clear? You got a deal. What about my money? Well, if you're all through with me, I'll get going now. Thirsty, huh? This file contains plans for transforming my firms into a new holding company to be launched on the world's stock markets. This campaign will make the new Ferretti Group one of the world's top ten multinational conglomerates. Mr. Reaper will see you now, Mr. Ferretti. Thank you. First of all, what is the news of your uncle? He's still in a coma. And the doctors seem unable to make any predictions. I'd be glad if you'd keep me informed of any changes. I have the greatest respect for your uncle. I'll tell you as soon as I find out anything, Mr. Reaper. And now, Mr. Ferretti, if you'd come to the reason you wanted to see me about my uncle's plan to launch a new group on the stock market. After taking over a number of companies he felt were of strategic importance, he was going to put me in charge of the whole operation. That's strange. Your uncle assured me the plan was still secret. The only person he'd doubt about it was me. 
he had to sound me out because he'd been needing to borrow a great deal of money from the bank I represent. Actually, my involvement was unofficial. I'm sure my uncle planned to talk to you about it. Unfortunately, he didn't find the time. And what do you intend to do? I merely want to carry out my uncle's plan before anyone else gets the same idea. Naturally, I'll need the same assistance you promised him. I'm not sure I'll be able to help you at the present time. You see, you're not president of the Ferretti Group. As I understand it, your father has placed Mr. Raja in charge for the time being. My father and I decided that was the best move at the present as to avoid any unnecessary panic. I can assure you I'm my uncle's rightful heir. That should be obvious from the fact that I know all about the project. Very well, then. On the day you come back to me as president of the Ferretti Group, I promise you we'll take another look at the whole situation. <laughs> Christine, he'll be okay. I know he will. Hey, Christina, why did you and Uncle Leah separate? It was my decision. After trying and trying to have children, we found out I couldn't. Couldn't give him a son he wanted, so I left him. That's ridiculous. You could have adopted. I know he wanted to. I didn't. I want Leo to have a son of his own, even if it means another woman giving it to him. So that's why I left and went back to the States. I left him free to try with someone else. Oh, must be wonderful to love someone like you love him. He's the only man I ever loved. Leo wasn't wealthy when we met, but I come from one of the oldest families in Virginia. My father and I were very close. I was an only child, and he didn't want us to get married. So I ran away from home. Dad and I haven't spoken for 18 years now. It's funny, when I hear myself tell it, it sounds like a soap opera. I wish I could find somebody that I could love in Christina style. Thanks. But you will. You're still young. But men like your Uncle Leo are very far and few between. Hi. Hello. Connie? Good morning to you. It's nice to finally it's meet nice you. To meet you. <laughs> It's funny, the way my father described you, I imagine you, I don't know, much less... Uh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, I've seen photographs of you, and to tell you the truth, in person, you're much more... Never mind. Well, yeah. <laughs> you know, the way my father talks about you, he, when he says, if it weren't for my efficient Connie, I'd probably have to shut down. <laughs> I think your father exaggerates a little bit. I just keep things running around here. As a matter of fact, I just talked to him a few minutes ago. He's in the Bahamas. I know. That's why I asked to see you. You mean we're meeting on the sly? If you will. But there is a reason why I came to see you. We had a family council 
in Italy, and my father decided to put me in charge of the group until my uncle's full recovery. I'm sure my father told you all this. No, he didn't. But we really haven't had a chance to talk about business since the accident. Well, I'll, I'll fill you in then. My plan is to step up the New York operations. I um, need to know everything you can tell me. To start with, I'd like to take a look at the new accounts. That would be fine. But we only have the official books here in the office. And you can never see the real situation from official figures. You know what I mean? Well, why don't we go to dinner and, um... You can tell me what the real situation is. Thanks. Thank you. Would you like a drink? Yeah, I would. I would like a mineral water with a little lime. Double scotch, please. Yeah, maybe we have some nuts. So, what would you like to know first? You and my dad make it. <laughs> Waiter, I changed my mind. I'd like a double martini. Do you? Are you always this shy? Yes. How did you know? My father and I have similar tastes. Your father's an exceptional man. Exceptional profits at the New York office are due entirely to you. I don't like working for peanuts. Waiter, hold the peanuts, please. <laughs> or the IRS. Right. Which is why we keep the records somewhere safe. Oh, you might be interested to know this. Our undeclared profits? They amount to 50% of the gross sales. When you say someplace safe, what do you mean? The safe deposit box? In a bank? You must be kidding. No, we keep the books in an apartment on the east side. you want that? Why not? Gives me an excuse to do something I'll be sorry for tomorrow. Puff of that. Oh. <laughs> That's not what I meant. <laughs> You're bad. Bad news. You have a beautiful apartment. Thank you. Your father bought it for me. He bought me these, too. Generous man, my father. Yes, he is. But I would hate to think that I didn't deserve it. Top of the class, economics, Yale, 1980. Mauricio Peretti, top of the class in partying and all that. Same college, same year. Me? Is that you? Impossible. I don't Hey, <laughs> you're still alive, huh? Oh, barely. So, what are we doing here? Why'd you get me out of bed this early? I consider this the best wake-up call of your life. What is it, a party, pretty young things? No, dollars. Millions of dollars. Okay, I'll go for the dollars.
let's see what you learned from those Wall Street sharks. What do you want me to do? You want me to eat them? Well, whatever turns you on, but I'd like you to read them first. There's bound to be a tax scam in here. If you find it, I'll make you a rich man. Nothing wrong. No. No. I mean, considering Leo's condition, everything is, is great. I mean, as a minority shareholder of the Ferretti Group, I can't complain about the amazing profits of our American associate, your <laughs> company in New York, to be exact. But I'm not going to go in this shit because of some shenanigans thought up by an ambitious hooker with a head for business. What are you talking about? What I'm talking about, Dad, those files you keep in the apartment on the Lower East Side. Come on, you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, I took the liberty of looking at those files and basically found out how you make all that extra money. Okay, rough estimate. I'd say your company has evaded taxes to the tune of about $20 million in the past five years, which works out to be somewhere in the region of about 30 years in prison. That was Connie's idea. I know that. But you approved it. By the way, she sure gives good business head. Oh, but you know that. You have two choices, Pop. One, you either go with my proposal, or you and Connie can spend the rest of your lives behind bars. You would really turn in your own father? Testify against you at any court in the land. So? What do you want? I want you to transfer all your Ferretti stock to my name immediately. I want to be appointed president of the group instead of... Instead of Raza. I want you to leave the New York office. I want you to fire Connie. I want you to appoint a new CEO in her place. My friend, David Phipps. I want you to listen to me. I want you to stop me. I want you to say no. I want a new father, goddammit. I'm afraid I have something very painful to tell you. An extremely unpleasant thing has happened. Go on, Margarita, please get to the point. It's about Maurizio. He's done something quite despicable and managed to push Osvaldo out of the business. But how? Blackmail. Something to do with taxes and money. I'm not sure of the details, but the fact is that Osvaldo no longer has any say in things. He's been forced to appoint Maurizio president and give him his majority holding. So now he's in charge? Yes. And nothing any of us say will count from now on. So now you're president of the Ferretti Group. That's right. Do you still intend to carry out your uncle's project? Of course. I'm sure you'll be happy to extend me the same loan you promised my uncle. Six hundred million dollars. I could advance you one hundred million, Mr. Fred. Wait, what do you mean? One hundred million? That's what? Not twenty percent of the amount I need. I'm sorry, but this is a bank, not a charitable institution. Now, of course, if you don't think a hundred million is enough, you can always postpone the operation. I'm, I'm not going to postpone anything. The whole plan has got to be carried out right away or it's going to lose its point. You're the boss. Tell me something. Had I been Leo Ferretti, you would have given me the entire 600 million, wouldn't you? Leo Ferretti never asked me, so I can't answer. For the moment, I can only repeat my offer of 100 million. I accept. Good. I'll have the papers drawn up for your signature tomorrow. Goodbye, Mr. Freddy. Murzio, it's Julia. Should I call you president, or is Murzio still okay? <laughs> 
joking apart, I want to congratulate you. And then I want to invite you to the send out tonight. Alberto and I are having a few friends over there to celebrate. Your table is over there, Mr. Ferretti. Thank you, Jean Carlo. Hi there. Good thing I didn't bring a date. I lied to you. What do you want? I think we should have a talk about business. Business? What, monkey business? <laughs> Alberto tells me that you're planning something very ambitious, but that you need a lot of money, hundreds of millions. I think I know the person who can help you. Oh, really? Who? Piero Costa. We had an affair for quite a while. Keep that to yourself. Obviously, Alberto knows nothing about it. Oh, it doesn't leave the table. <laughs> Piero usually spends the weekend on his yacht in Central Pay. I can set up a meeting if you like. What do you get out of this? Meeting. Uh, I'll call him tomorrow. Uh, uh, still let him tell me what you want out of this. Two percent of whatever Piero lends you. I'm not asking for three hundred million dollars. That's six million from me. I'm a very spoiled woman, and I adore ambitious men like you. of million, you say? Yes, but if we're partners, you stand to make that back ten times over. Maurizio, I've been living and fighting in the world of high finance for over 40 years now. When I began, very much like your Uncle Leo, I, I was an accountant in a textile company. So when a young man comes to me and offers me a deal, I always try to give him a fair hearing. That way, uh, remembering my own past and... Uh, and the hopes I had. But the thing is, you're not some young accountant like uh, me or your uncle. You're Ferretti Jr. Heir to one of the largest fortunes in Italy. Born with the belief that uh, you have the right to everything you want. That everything is going to go smoothly for you. You're not only interested in you want power. You thought it would be nice to show how much sharper and more powerful than your uncle you can be. Hmm? Uh, would you like a drink? Yes, please. Hmm. You see, I have no sympathy with your aspirations, nor your methods. I even heard you uh, blackmailed your own father to get your hands on your uncle Leo's plan. I'm fond of his father, as I am of Leo, even though we find ourselves often on opposite sides. <laughs> and I never hit below the belt. Driving is wonderful. That's the way you feel. Apologize for wasting your precious time. <laughs> so you have better things to do. I take it easy. It could be hazardous for a man of your age.
Marjorie. Thank you, Piero. Take me someplace I can find a real drink. Come on. deal looks good, very promising, but I, I need to see you as soon as possible. Where? When? Right, well, I'll be in Acapulco this weekend at Las Brisas. Could you meet me there? Okay, that'll be fine. We'll have a good time. Okay, see you then. Adios. Good morning. Good morning. How are you feeling? I mean, besides the usual splitting headache, dandy. I dropped off fairly quick last night. Right over there. Where'd you sleep? Unfortunately, the couch. Hmm. I played the gentleman last night. Considering your condition, I could have easily taken advantage of you. <laughs> what are you doing? Taste test. <laughs> Come on, I thought you liked me. Like when we were kids. Oh, really? Mm. No. I've grown up a bit since then. Oh, I'll say. And I realize it's not a good idea to do it with your own family. We're not a normal family. No, this is true. We're not a normal family. If we were, with Uncle Leo dying in the hospital, we'd be at his bedside and not plotting against him. Tell me, Beta, who pays for your little weakness? Your mother? No, I wouldn't go to my mother for anything. Uncle Leo gives me a monthly allowance. Really? How will you manage when Uncle Leo can't sign the checks? I'll manage. Someday, you're going to have to come to me. You know, I wouldn't be so quick to cancel out Uncle Leo. Besides, I'm not ever going to come to you for anything. It's as I thought, he's a very ambitious young man, and his ambition will be his undoing. He's ready to go ahead with a credit of merely 100 million. Good. When the new Ferretti company comes on the market and is unable to uh, sustain its price, uh, I'll step in and wipe up with uh, 500 million. 
a billion. My bank will advance you the other 500 million. And the new Ferretti will be ours? Yours, the new Piero Costa. I'm only a banker. <laughs> my job is to get my money back with interest. from Mr. David. David wanted to send you a bottle of champagne, but I suggested he send me instead. Uh, Mr. David, uh, book the table in the restaurant at 2 o'clock, sir. Would you kindly tell Mr. David that I will join him as soon as humanly possible? Uh, yes, Thank sir. Thank you. Gracias. transportation company based in Minneapolis that the market thinks is about to go belly up. One of its trucks carrying ammonium sulfate exploded a little way inside the Mexican border, killing a, a number of people. The company, of course, has had to suspend operations while the matter makes its way through the Mexican courts. And the stock has taken a dive because investors know that if the company is not cleared, it will inevitably fold. Good for us. The thing is, company will be cleared, at which point it will resume operations as before. How do you know it will be cleared? Because I go to bed with the Mexican judge. Getting married in December. Well done. I must say, I was right to give you that job, David. The judge will need a payment of $2 million. Sammy will take care of the details. We'll also have to set up an offshore concern to buy up shares of the company at a cost of about $20 million. When the company is cleared, it'll have a value of no less than $300 million. Tell me, Sammy, why did you tell David all of this? Because I go to bed with him, too. Of course. To thank you for the champagne you sent to the room. It was an exceptional vintage. It was. I had a taste of it myself before I sent it out. Cheers. 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 For the future. find out who that girl is at the Ferretti table for me? Sure. Thanks. Welcome back. Thank you. 
Here, Acosta's planning to double cross you. Oh. He and Reaper have reached some agreement to buy up your shares. Plan to step in as soon as the price falls and you can't support it. Why didn't you tell me this before? I'm telling you now. Son of a bitch, he's lecturing me about honesty and loyalty. Piero's totally unscrupulous. How do you know about this? Let's just say I still keep in touch with him. You're fucking him. I don't need to sleep with him to discover certain things. Well, you're fucking him. It's too exhausting having two lovers at once. Besides, <laughs> I'm with you now. I don't, okay, now just... Slow down, because now I gotta, I gotta call David in Mexico. I gotta tell him to speed things up with the Mexican judge. I, if I don't have my money in time, I'm done for. When you'll have some new issue. A week. Get me Mr. Reaper's office in the land right away, please. Your new offering has started very poorly. Any comment? Yes, we foresaw this eventuality. It's a natural phenomenon. Nobody's panicking. First time our shares have been offered, and I'm sure the response will be positive. Yeah. What if it doesn't get off the ground? Our companies are as healthy as any. I'm very optimistic. Thank you. Money, you mean? Yes. The money, the money. No one seems to trust me. No one seems to have any confidence in me. You mean no one? Bankers, investment companies, pe rich people with lots of money. I told you Piero Costa was unscrupulous. <laughs> Look, I know I'm over my head. I know. I, some kids grow up to be just like their fathers, right? I grew up to be like my uncle. I, I, go figure. Came to terms with it a little prematurely, you know? Sue me, Jesus. Maybe I ought to cut my losses. Why? I know Piero's a tough man, but you can beat him. Just gotta change your tactics, that's all. Compromise. Yeah, how? Mm, one person who can help you, if she wants to. Our dear, honest, upright Aunt Christina. Okay, no, no, no. <laughs> Off, I say. Oh. I know you hate her. <laughs> she doesn't care much for you either. Go to see her in Geneva. I imagine they told you uh, a lot of uh, lies about me. I haven't had a lot of time to listen to gossip the last few days. I know you're the president now. And I hope you'll be cool for the job. Too. Well, let's face it, you and I both know the rest of the family are doorknobs, and the whole thing would have collapsed if it weren't for you and me. All I want to do is protect what Uncle Leo built up. What I need, well, what I need is money to ensure that. Hmm. Have you uh, talked to Reaper? He's the only banker that Leo seemed to trust. Reaper, he's a suspicious old fart. He doesn't trust me as far as he can throw me. No. You're the only one who can help me. I know Uncle Leo has a large personal holding at the UBS here in Geneva. Perhaps if you promise the manager something, he will let you draw on it. Turn a blind eye, so to speak. Why should I do that? Because that's exactly what Leo would have done. No, he would have never suggested that I bribe the head of the bank. No. He wouldn't have, no. He, had he been in my position, perhaps, neither here nor there. Um, can we, let's toss history, okay? Let, I, I think we should be friends. I think it's in both of our interests to do so.
personally, I don't know what you expect to gain from an ex-husband confined to a wheelchair for the rest of his life. I mean, even if he regains consciousness. I, I think I'm like Leo. I, well, except I'm 30 years younger. I'm not a vegetable, but... Take your hand off me. Now. If you help me, I'll give you half a Ferretti. I'll never do anything for you. Affection is not a share you can quote on the stock market. It doesn't go you can't buy and sell it. You seem to think that feeling follows the price of gold. No, it's you. It's the heart, not the stock market, that fixes the important things in life. Learn it. Sauna is all ready for you, sir. Any calls? Yes, your brother's wife. Also your cousin, Miss Beta, called three times. She left a number and said it was very urgent. Thanks. Hello, may I speak to Beta, please? This is Maurizio Ferretti. Look, I need $10,000 right away. They're going to cut me. No, I'm not joking. I owe this guy some money, and, and look, I can't talk to you over the phone. Just come and get me right away. Yeah. Hang on. Give me your address. Yeah. Come to Lambrate, Via Pola, 24, apartment 12C. Yeah, and I'd hurry up if I were you. See my cousin. Right. Here's your cousin. Oh, show him the cash. It's a little jumpy. I can't imagine why. See, I told you my cousin was a reliable guy. Okay, come on, come on. Come on. <sighs> okay, well, if you got a coat and a purse there, if there's nothing else you need, I don't really want to come back. Listen, can I borrow a couple of weeks, okay? Put them on the bill. You don't have to count it. You got, there's, there's 10 grams. Me and your cousin had a deal. The point is, she owes me this money. She got 20 grams when she came last week, not to mention the money that she owed me from before. Okay? I'm not in this for charity, you know? Oh, that's such bullshit, man. The truth is, you want to screw me twice. You've been cutting that coke till it's trash. You got your money, okay? But you can cross me off your list because I'm through with you, you scumbag! What would you have done? What would have happened if I didn't show? He would cut me. Or I would have had to go to bed with him. I don't know which is worse. You like living this way? Uh, I don't think about it. When I want to do something, I just go and do it. But thanks. This time I thought I'd really blown it. No. Well, you're welcome. Show listen, you owe me. I paid your debt to your dealer and society, and the way I figure it, we got to work out a satisfactory form of compensation. Get it off ace. <laughs> you know why I liked you when we were kids? Even then, I knew what a bastard you are.
I'm going to see my lawyer about a divorce. And I warn you, I'm going to do all that I can to see you left with nothing. Not even Veronica. If I can help it. This is very please. My brother in law. I'm afraid he's asleep. Sorry, madam. I said he's in bed. It's okay, daddy. Do you know what time it is? Oh, man. Do you turn out the light? You gotta phone first. You know, that way you avoid unpleasant surprises. I might have expected this from someone like you. Why the static? She could have turned out the light at least. Well, it's nice to see that I'm not the only black sheep in the family. <laughs> you and I are a lot alike. It's exactly the way I treat my men when I'm fed up with them. I wasn't fed up with Julia. You weren't? Mm. Well, what then? Well, it's just how bad luck I fell with you. Oh, no, no. Mm -mm. Last night was strictly because I owed you. Now we're even. If, if last night was about paying debts, how do you account for the bonus you gave me? I have to admit, you are good in bed. But you're not the only one. Well, you're the only one for me, Cupcake. Can he speak? He said a few words to me, but they didn't seem to mean anything, but we probably couldn't even, you know, we probably couldn't understand him. The doctors are very hopeful now. They think he could make a full recovery. Steiner, this is Mr. Ferretti. Happy to make your acquaintance. Nice to meet you. Mr. Steiner's been helping us with some of the finer points of our Mexican venture. When is the decision due? In two days. We've persuaded them to follow an urgent procedure. Steiner will take care of the payment personally. He'll leave for Mexico as soon as the funds are ready for the judge. That's fine. I'll draw the money out in the morning. OK. See you tomorrow, then. Pleasure. Thank you. Can we trust this Steiner? Absolutely, 100%. Don't worry. You can sleep easy with things in his hands. Yes? Maurizio's from Milan, your secretary. Patrizia. When? Keep me posted. That's good news, isn't it? Nothing. 
Will you continue his plan? Your uncle won't let you. He'll return to his position as head of the Freddy Group, and you'll be forced to step down. I'm not taking this possibility into account. I am the majority shareholder. There's no pushing me out. Hi, Christina. And thank you. Without you there, I'd probably never have made it. <laughs> How are you? Like I slept too much. You've been running all your life, Leo. Maybe just a little rest now. Maybe it's time. I'll talk to the doctors. I'm coming back to Milan as soon as possible. I must have been feeling neglected. Or perhaps I wanted to test your love, give you a jolt or something. Happy to be here, too. We all miss you so much. Thank you, my dear. Where's Maurizio? Um, he stayed in Nassau with Oswaldo. He asked me to give you a big hug. Why don't we go inside? We don't want you catching cold. Pink room, so you don't have to go up and down the good, stairs. Good. What the hell's going on? Tell me. Plans for the evening, Mr. Peretti. Yes. One moment, please. It's for you, Mr. Phipps. Hello? Hi. Did you get my present? Yeah, I understand. You want to open it right away. Well, go ahead. No, don't worry. 
Uh, I'm just gonna grab a bite of my own and we can celebrate tomorrow. All right. Well, give me a call if you need anything. Thanks, I'll be down to get going. <clears throat> You've been stood up? Excuse me? <laughs> me too. I was supposed to have dinner with my boss, but his wife caught him as he was leaving the house. So now I'm stuck with a table for two at Le Cirque. And to think that it took me three days to make these reservations. Oh, that's tough luck. Yeah, but it doesn't have to be. The table is in my name, and I don't suppose they'd mind if I showed up with someone else. job do you do? Oh, I'm the head of public relations for a computer company. You're very good at public relations. Hmm, thank you, sir. Mm. Yeah, my God. Oh, my God. My boss would be so proud. <sighs> Listen, I have to get up early. What? Are you kicking me out? <laughs> Are you? Well, yeah. I mean, I really need a good night of sleep. Uh, it's okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm gonna go get something to drink. You want something? No, I'm okay. You sure? Mm -hmm. Nothing at all. Fine. Okay. I'll be right back. Are you looking for something? Are you the Connie Field who used to work for Ferretti? In person. What is going on here? What kind of game are you playing? Let's just say that I brought you here to make you an offer. I'm going under the assumption that a person's actions are a lot like shares on the stock market. They all have their price. So there must be something that would make David Phipps come over to our side. And whose side might that be? The senior Ferretti's. Leo and Osvaldo. Look, you just name your price. I'm sure they're not going to have any trouble making it. Taxi.
tell your clients that a verdict of innocence will be pronounced tomorrow. You're under arrest. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say may be used against Let's you in a court of law. Slow down, please. Let me just call my lawyer. You can talk to him in jail. He's under arrest, too. Oh, shit. Uh, call David. He's at the office. All right. Thank you. They've arrested Maurizio. Maurizio Ferretti was arrested in New York today at a well-known Midtown hotel. The reasons for the arrest are still unknown. The Ferretti clan, when questioned at the family villa in Como, refused to comment and have so far issued no statement. And now the financial scene. In Milan, the MIB index was down one point. <laughs> Let me ask you something. Did Uncle Leo have me arrested? Yes. But Connie had a hand in it. And me too. However, it was your friend David who played the starring role. He sold you to the highest bidder. Which, in this case, was us. Anyway... Uncle Leo and I are now willing to help you. There are attorneys here in New York who can work miracles, so long as you pay them. And in principle, we are willing to assure you such assistance, but it depends on you. Why do you want an exchange? The majority holding in New Ferretti, your shares in the old group, and you've got to give me back my position as president of Osvaldo Ferretti, New York. Obviously with Connie, eh? Reinstated as chief executive. I mean, obviously. You know, I, I was right. You're a real bastard, Dad. Plus. 26 noirs périphériques, carré, cheval et plein. Tenez le quai. You're a great mascot, Ben. Can't go wrong. Merci, monsieur. Here, go and play another table. You can keep half of it. Employé, merci. Employé, merci.
police hospital. What happened? Nothing serious. You're pregnant, that's all. I'm so very glad to see you. I'm sure you know what's been going on, but I'm back in the saddle again. And Maritza's in jail in New York. He always looked like a loser. <laughs> anyway, we set up the operation we two had planned. Now the music's playing, we got to dance. When the market's open again on Monday, I'll need cash to support the new issue. You need $500 million. The sum that your nephew asked for. I refused him. That was him. I'm afraid there's a difficulty for you, too. Does that mean you, you're refusing me the loan? I have no choice. And for a very simple reason, I gave the 500 million to somebody else. I see. You were betting on a price fall. And someone else could take over my group. I thought you'd be dead. Maybe you're right. And I am. sell New Ferretti too. Piero Costa. Of all my enemies, he chose the top of the list. Men like me aren't afraid of death. But we're terrified by decline. The fact of being useless. The loss of power. And I'm useless now because on Monday morning I'm going to lose everything I've built up in the past 20 years. You know something, Leo? When you were in that hospital bed, unconscious, I prayed every day that you'd be given the strength to open your eyes again. And my prayers were heard. But they were heard so that you could get back your full power and intelligence, not to humiliate you. You can't give up. You've got to go on fighting. What you built up is yours. And nobody's going to take that from you. Nobody. It's too late now. It's too hard to fight. All on my own against everybody. Even my own nephew. Go back to the States. It's all over here. You're still young. You can make a new life for yourself. I thought you were having dinner with your husband. No, I told him I was spending the night with you. <laughs> Don't worry, he thinks I'm at a concert. Tell me something. Why did you come back to me? I thought you were after Maurizio. I made a mistake. I thought he was a winner, but he's just like his brother, a loser, right down the line. You're right. In a few weeks, the Freddy group is going to be mine. Maurizio and the whole family will be bankrupt. All I ask is that you don't get rid of my husband, too. I didn't think you cared about him. I don't. But he's capable of taking our daughter away from me. Yeah. I think we can find something interesting for him to do. Something that entails a lot of travel. <laughs> so you don't have to make up excuses in order to be with me.
Miss Christina? Is that you, Bill Jackson? Yes, Miss Christina. My head's all white now. But you are more beautiful than ever. Is my father home? Yes, he's home. Been waiting 18 years for you. my father. You don't have a father anymore, and I don't have a daughter. I'm sorry, Dad, but you refused to see me again. I wrote you, I called, I begged you. You know I'm a difficult man. Yes. Maybe it's because you didn't have a woman beside you. Be. Your mother died too young. And I made the mistake of thinking that you would stay beside me. But you deserted me. You left me alone to grow old in this huge house with nothing but silence and memories for company. And all because you wouldn't accept the man that I love. You couldn't see anything good about Leo. He was too old for me. He was Italian. He wasn't rich enough to marry the daughter of one of the most powerful men in the United States. You forced me to choose between you and him. And you chose him. Yes. I chose a husband over a father because my father was wrong. And he loved me. And he became a powerful man. And he built an empire without ever hurting my feelings or harming you in any way. Only you have been willing to meet him. You'd have liked him. Because he's like you. Perhaps that's why I fell in love with him. He's honest. He's just. And he's generous. Oh, he's a hard man, all right. But he's capable of enormous sensitivity, just like you. The only difference is that when the time comes, he's capable of forgiving. Daddy. I love you, too. You know something? I never thought it would feel this good to change one's mind. <laughs> more we can do. The company's done for. It's gonna be under five dollars in one hour. And we'll be forced to sell everything. And Costa will buy us up for peanuts. I don't think you'll be in time. I managed to get a little loan from Chase Manhattan in New York for about 400 million. How on earth? My father gave his personal guarantee. <laughs> this is Leo Ferretti. I want you to start buying up our shares. Yes, you heard me. We'll buy for a nominal value of $200 million. Mr. Maurizio Ferretti would like to see you. Oh, he would, would he? <laughs> 
cinnamon. Well, 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 well. When did you get out of jail? This morning. You were the first person I wanted to see. Really? And why would that be? I haven't had a woman for two days. Just kidding. I wanted to congratulate you. You really did a number on me. I did exactly to you what you did to me. So, now that your family's thrown you out of the company, what do you plan on doing with your life? Getting back in. <laughs> How do you plan on doing that? Well, I mean, obviously, you're still sleeping with my father, right? If you work at it, perhaps you can convince him to let me in. Yeah, you really are something else. Why would I help you? Well, I may have lost the battle, but I haven't lost the war. I mean, we're both still young, and I'll remember you when I'm headed for Eddie. I saw your shares had recovered. So I thought you must be better, too. Remarkable. A rise of 70% in just two days. <laughs> I'm glad you asked me to come out here. Like the old days. Great little one-year-old. Goes like the wind. I should like to offer my apologies. I always thought you were such a stiff-necked old son of a bitch. Oh, yes, I am. I am. But with you, I lost the most horrible game of my life. In moral as well as in financial terms. Perhaps it's time for me to leave the scene. Maybe. But before you go, I want you to do something for me. I need some backing. I've a yearning to tease your ex-partner, Pierre Acosta. And I've worked out the sweetest little plan to bring him down. And get control of his whole empire. But I need one billion to do it. Why not? <laughs> Let's talk about it. <laughs> I'm pregnant. Who's the father? Maurizio. What are you going to do about it? Keep it. I wasted a lot of my life. I spent a lot of time running away or blaming everybody else for my problems. I can't get that time back, but I can forgive myself that. I'd like a new start. I think this baby could do that for me. Are you going to tell him? I know he's here in Italy. No. All Maurizio wanted was me. All I want is my baby. I think I'll get along just fine without him. Come on, let's go tell your Uncle Leo the good news. And don't worry, anything you need will always be here. You know how much your uncle wants an heir. After all, What's the point of all these millions? Mwah! <laughs>